Hey everyone, today we'll be telling you about a chapter originally called the Fire Claws, but now known as the Relictors. And now renegade space marine chapter after the 13th Black Crusade, for let's just say some less than common weaponry. But more about that later. As always, if you enjoy the video, please do give it a like, it helps show this to more people. And if you did enjoy it, maybe even sub to the channel. Here we go! The chapter, now known as the Relictors, was originally designated the name of the Fire Claws, and is thought to have been founded during the darkest days of the Age of Apostasy. They are said to be a combination of Ultramarines and Dark Angels genetic stock. However, confirmation of this is difficult due to the inaccuracy of the records from this time period. The Fireclaw gene seed was created by the Adeptus Mechanicus within their laboratories on Mars. Their seed was cultured to be the hybrid of the Ultramarines and Dark Angels, which intended to draw on the stoic natures of both of the legions. Whilst the reason of their founding isn't confirmed, a transcription of the mythos Angelica Mortis suggests their creation was to bolster the defences around the Eye of Terror. This would be achieved by stationing their fortress monastery on an ancient Romilis class star fort. This would be stationed in orbit, around the world of Torva Minus, or Neutra to its locals. This would place the chapter directly in the line of fire from roaming packs of Chaos Warbands that would emerge from the broiling eye. The chapter would stand successful for near five millennia, serving to hold their strategically vital position against Chaos Intrusion, and took part in many glorious engagements during this time period. They had taken part in the Imperial attacks that had purged the Cult of the Inner Eye, and had drove the ancient enemy from the Hives during the Siege of Cocalus. Namely, they had been part of the relief force that had made it possible for millions to evacuate an ill-fated crusade into the Eye of Terror by the Warmaster Hendrik. During the 41st millennium, approximately 150 standard years before the Third War of Armageddon, the Emperor's turret revealed the existence of a badly damaged Space Hulk that had been spat out from the warp close to the Forge world named Stygies. This world was located within Segmentum Obscurus, and it was the Fire Claws that were mobilised to seek and intercept it. As the Fire Claws approached, the Auspex reported that the Hulk was named the Captor of Sin, and had originally belonged to the Imperium of Mankind. The Hulk had become home to a Chaos Space Marine warband led by a champion of Zinch, known as the Excoriator. On approach, the Fire Claws crippled the Hulk, preventing escape as it entered the Stygi system. In line with the Codex Astartes, the Hulk was boarded by Terminator assault squads, led by a librarian known as Decario. These squads were joined by an Inquisitor also known as Demarche. As the Terminator squads stalk through the Hulk, the Chaos Warband choose to make a desperate last stand within the massive engine room. The fighting was brutal between both sides, as the Librarian and Inquisitor faced off against the Chaos Champion. A blade forged within the Heart of Terror within its hand, with the essence of a greater demon bound within its warp steel. Whilst the Inquisitor attempted to hack at the Vile Champion with a Power Axe, it proved little use, and failed to penetrate his unnatural armour. The Demon's Blade, however, would prove far more deadly, and with a retaliatory swing, the blade easily cut through Demarche's armour, grievously wounding the Inquisitor. With the next swing, the Champion shattered the Librarian's Force Sword, and managed to split the Terminator armour he wore. Staggered, Dicario managed to strike out with his Power Fist, ripping the Champion's arm from its socket in a shower of blood. Even unarmed, the champion proved a lethal force, and was still unnaturally strong from his blessings from his dark patron. Whilst laying into four of his brothers, Dicario muttered a prayer to the Emperor, and reached for the nearest weapon to hand, striking out at the champion. The head of the demon thumped to the floor with a wet thud and to his amazement, it was the demon sword that he had picked up that had slain the champion. He had killed the warrior with his own Chaos-blessed weapon. 
It was in the moment after that Dicario realised he was filled with a sense of utter purpose with the weapon in his hand. His mind instantly realised this could be used against the forces of chaos. Although the bleeding Inquisitor warned him to put the weapon down and that only he was trained to use such a weapon. With reluctance, the weapon was handed to the Inquisitor and the Imperial forces returned to their ship leaving behind a contingent of Adeptus Mechanicus survey teams to assess the Hulk for Archaeotech. Over time, and with the aid of the Librarian, Dimash was able to convince the Fireclaws chapter master of his theory. Both Dicario and Dimash both believed that these weapons could be used to further the Imperial cause. And with the Librarian's aid, Dimash was able to successfully petition the Fireclaws chapter master of this theory, and convince him to undertake a crusade under his guidance. They would explore the world surrounding the Eye of Terror, searching for more of these Chaos relics. Over the decades, the chapter found many of these artifacts, and with it came the change of the chapter name to the Relictors. It was only a matter of time until someone caught wind of such actions. The practice of using Chaos weaponry couldn't have gone unnoticed for long. Once word had filtered back to those amongst the Inquisition, urgent action was taken by a Puritan cell that was backed up by four chapters of Space Marines and an Emperor-class battleship. The force descended onto the Relictor's Fortress Monastery and gave the chapter two options hand over Inquisitor Dimash and all of the recovered Chaos artifacts, or be annihilated. With little real choice in the matter, the Relictors obeyed, handing the weapons along with the now heretic Dimash over to the invading force. As penance for dealing with the weapons, they were dispatched on a century-long crusade of penance against all foes of the Emperor. As part of this penitent crusade, all ten companies were deployed to the world of Armageddon during its Third Wars, and were situated in the jungles that lined the world's equator. The jungles hosted tribes of savage orcs that had settled after the world's brutal wars against the Greenskins. The chapter, however, was publicly criticised by Imperial commanders during their deployment as they had stationed the majority of their force in the effort of surrounding the foul pyramid known as Angron's Monolith. This was despite repeated and concentrated Imperial requests for assistance elsewhere. The area surrounding the foul monolith had been labelled Purgatus, and was a twisted and diseased fellscape that had been warped by the presence of such an almighty evil made manifest. These feral orcs seemed drawn to the monolith, and their nests were hidden in the surrounding areas. Conflict within the jungle and the surrounding areas of the monolith caused much rumour and speculation amongst the Imperial forces. Soldiers would stagger from the jungle in a daze, babbling incoherently claiming impossible feats, that the pyramid had changed orientation, or that an inner life had seemed to glow within. Whilst these could easily have been chalked up to the dreaming of a fatigued mind, or even the raving of a war-broken soldier, not all of these could. Reports of a mysterious being sheathed in metal skin could not, and marked the locations of squads missing in action. Imperial astropaths had detected disturbances within the warp emitting from the monolith, with a build-up of these psychic energies within. Out of all of the warriors, only the Relictors showed any willing to fight within these sectors. The chapter eventually left the world, after the entire chapter's librarians had received visions of a lidless eye that wept blood. The chapter gathered within their star fort that had stationed above Armageddon, and left the world travelling back towards the Eye of Terror. As the chapter moved deeper into the eye, their engagements with Chaos Warbands and affiliated forces increased, and with it so did the spoils of war. Once again, the chapter had begun to accumulate the Chaos relics that they had once possessed. This conflict, however, would eventually come to a head. The remote Diomedes archive stored a host of Chaos artifacts that were capable of incredible destructive powers. 
This was guarded by an Inquisition force that sought to prevent any of these falling into the hands that would wish to do evil. Due to the continued conflict between the Relictors and Inquisitorial forces over their use of Chaos artifacts during the repelling of the 13th Black Crusade, declaring the chapter Excommunicate Traitorus. This is the designation given to those that have committed extreme acts of heresy against the Emperor of Mankind, and their legacy is completely struck from Imperial records with all gene stores burned. The Grey Knights campaigned against the Relictors, and very nearly wiped them out, with only a few hundred of these managing to escape into the Eye of Terror. Their current allegiance is unknown, although after their near decimation at the hands of the Imperium, it may seem likely that they have turned against it. On the feral world of Agoros, the Adeptus Mechanicum call in an old favour against the world's fire-wielding natives. Their flame-tongued shamans prove difficult to deal with, leaving the Mechanicum forces aflame with invisible psychic fires. The Relictor's third company attacked four days after the request was received, and smashed through the enemy, reaching the native's hidden city. Lining the road stood dusty statues of the Thousand Suns Legion, all facing towards a monumental effigy of the Thousand Sun sorcerer Aruman. This offends the Loyalists deeply, which after crushing the remaining natives, are ordered by their commander, Captain Exorius, to pull the profane statue down. As the statue impacts the floor, the statues become animated, and it is revealed that these are actually Rubric Marines. The Relictors had been duped, and were ambushed by the Rubric Marines, slaughtering the Imperial forces to the last. Days prior to Abaddon's attack on the Cadian Gate, the Relictors arrived in system, seeking to contribute all ten of their battle companies to fight against the gathering tide of the 13th Black Crusade. The chapter operated alone, refusing to submit themselves to the authority of others. Whilst in system, they took part in numerous battles across various different worlds, firstly facing off against a Wordbearer warband, before reappearing and then clashing with the Night Lords. The Relictors continued to refuse the Great Wolf Logan Grimnar's orders to return to the Fortress world and reinforce it. However, they once again would depart for the Agri world of Freemas. Much doubt is cast over what actually occurred on the world, however the wolf scouts that were dispatched to locate the Relictors recovered partial vidlogs that suggested that they had assaulted the Diomedes Archive. It appeared to show that their objective was held within a sealed stasis vault. This was the beginning of the chapter's conflicts with the Inquisition. Artekis Bardane is the current chapter master of the Relictors and is known to be a fearsome force on the battlefield. The son of a battle chieftain, he was young when he learnt the methodology of war, and the planet that the child was born on, being a feral world, required the infant to quickly learn to fight or die. As the boy grew, so did his confidence, and he was quickly chosen by a librarian from the Relictor's chapter to become a space marine. Artekis rose quickly through the ranks due to his supreme confidence, accepting each new mystery that would be disclosed with the new rank with relative ease. Due to his skill in mastering chaos weaponry, he was given command of a company sent to cut deep into the Eye of Terror to capture further chaos weaponry. During this incursion, he would reclaim a weapon which has come to be known as the Screaming Flail from a Slaneshi champion. The Astartes continued to achieve greater glories as he claimed further weapons which could be used against the Chaos forces. After a battle which saw the destruction of the Cult of the Scarlet Vein, which he was the sole survivor of, he was finally elevated to Chapter Master at the recommendation of his predecessor. On the world of Armageddon, Artekis believes that the cursed monolith of Angron could be studied with great potential for knowledge hidden within, and it was only at the end of the war, convinced by the chapter's librarians, that he would abandon Armageddon. Whilst he has now been declared Extremus Diabolus, 
Arteca still believes he is serving the Emperor, and will eventually be accepted back into the good graces of the Imperium, despite the hatred of the Puritan factions of the Inquisition. Overall, it seems to me like another situation where Loyalist Astartes are capable of defending the Imperium, but they've been pushed away from the very thing they sought to protect. Although there are definitely some questions over the actions the Relictors have taken. Overall, I think I'd still prefer a Loyalist with a demon weapon than no Space Marine at all. As always, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, and maybe even subscribe. Cheers!